Hello, welcome back to Taming Toxic Plants. Today I want to tell you about a really unique situation where we can get cycloptic lambs or lambs with other deformities due to this veratrum or false hellebore plant species. So false hellebore is in the veratrum genus. It's in the Liliaceae family. It goes by other names like skunk cabbage or corn lily. And uh, there's a number of species that are of concern, um, Californicum, Viridae and album, and I'll talk about each of those in a second, but you can see here, it's a very large plant with a very large broad leaf weed and very distinct um, in its growth form. This is another picture. This comes out of the USDA handbook. Um, so these leaves can measure anywhere from nine to 12 inches in length and three to six inches broad. And then they have this really unique kind of growth habit. When we look up uh, the distribution of veratrum across the U.S., their species pretty much in every um, state of the United States and several Canadian provinces. But when we look at these species, there's some um, interesting distribution patterns, and I'll go through these. On the bottom left is album. It's restricted to Alaska. Um, in the center bottom is Californicum, and you can see it's primarily in the western U.S., um, the Great Basin, um, in parts of western um, Wyoming, but also all throughout California and some southwestern states. And then Viridae, you can see the map here, um, primarily in the Pacific Northwest states. We don't have county resolution for Montana or Wyoming or the provinces of BC or Alberta, but certainly is present in those states um, and provinces. So in Wyoming, there's multiple of these veratrum species that are possible. They tend to grow on moist meadows and hillsides at pretty high elevations, ranging from 6,000 to 11,000 feet, and they emerge rapidly after snowmelt. Now, the primary issues are going to manifest in sheep. There is some evidence that they can occur in llamas uh, and goats as well. We don't know as much about problems in cattle, but there is a potential for risk there. There's no evidence of problems in horses or wildlife uh, at this point in time. In terms of the toxin in veratrum, it is a steroidal alkaloid, and these have teratogenic but also abortifacient effects. Teratogenic meaning it affects the growing embryo or fetus, and abortifacient meaning it can cause abortions. The primary alkaloid that we're concerned with is called cyclopamine, and I just want to point out the prefix of this alkaloid is cyclop, which will um, be informative, informative as we get into the symptoms. So here's the problem. False hellebore is generally unpalatable. It's not grazed unless animals are hungry or if it's one of the first plants to green up. And so as we move sheep, particularly into high elevations as snow melts, this could be when this problem occurs. Now it's most toxic early in the season and it decreases as it matures. And it's most toxic in the roots, um, a little bit less so in the leaves, stalks and flowers. Now sheep will readily eat the plant. Cattle generally don't, only if they're hungry or there's low availability of other forages. And the main issue is these fetal deformities, particularly in lambs. One of those is cycloptic lambs. And so you can see the picture here from the USDA plant, um, poisonous plant handbook that shows that. It can also cause parturition or lambing problems in the ewe because um, gestation is extended up to 240 days and the fetus can weigh up to 30 pounds. And that's pretty extreme because Typically, gestation is about 152 days, and lambs are going to weigh anywhere from 8 to 9 pounds. So really severe problems for those uh, females trying to have those lambs. Now, there's a lot known about when veratrum or false hellebore is ingested and the problems that can occur. This all happens in the first month of gestation. So if you ingest the plant on the 13th to 14th days of gestation, this causes cycloptic lambs, lambs born with one eye. These lambs may also have deformation of the bones in the mandible and the maxilla, which is the upper and lower jaw and of the eyes. If they use and ingest the plant on the 15th to 19th days of gestation, here we can have high incidence of abortion um, due to embryonic loss. If they use and ingest the plant on the 27th to the 33rd day of gestation, lambs are born with tracheal agenesis or the absence of a trachea or the windpipe. And then finally, if you use ingest the plant on the 28th to 30th day of gestation, lambs are born with shortened legs. So really specific information on ingestion relative to gestation. 
Now, in terms of clinical signs, this can be acute or chronic, but generally it's the embryonic or fetal deformities that are noticed. Um, affected animals may have some other signs like excessive salivation, weakness, and an inability to stand an irregular gait, convulsions, and even vomiting. They may also have a fast and irregular heartbeat and then slow and shallow breathing. They may go into a coma, but ultimately it is these birth defects that are mo the most um, common and noticeable symptom. Now, in terms of dosages, it doesn't take a lot of plant material. In sheep, only six to 12 ounces of plant material is needed. Um, if a sheep were to consume 1.25 milligrams per kilogram of body weight of the root, it's lethal. If they consume 0.88 milligrams per kilogram of the root relative to body weight, that's going to trigger those deformations of the face um, without toxicity to the U. So for llamas and goats, there's not a lot of data, but there is anecdotal evidence of these teratogenic um, effects, um, specifically the deformities similar to sheep. In cattle and horses, there's no data available. And when it comes to diagnosis, of course, presence on rangelands and then ingestion by those gestating females in that first month and then the potential clinical symptoms. Now, there's no other treatment details available. So really, this is a grazing management situation, especially relative to green up and then your breeding program and when those ewes would be in that first month of gestation. So really interesting situation here with these uh, cycloptic or, or otherwise deformed lambs. Um, and as we go into the spring, it's something to be aware of, particularly in those high elevations. So again, here's these additional resources for you to consider in my email. And remember, if a poisoning does occur, always consult the appropriate veterinarian or medical professional.